Hello everyone. So what we will do in this video is study a new technique of integration for evaluating trigonometric integrals. So what kind of integral am I talking about? Well, we'll see a whole bunch of integrals that fall into different types. So the first type is going to be product of trig functions, so either sines of cosines, tans of secants, cotans and cosecants. M and N here are just arbitrary uh, non-negative integers. Now we'll focus on the first two because the third one is very similar, so mostly sine, cos, tan, and secant. All right, we're also going to be interested in uh, integrals that involve products of sine and cosines, but with different arguments. How can I evaluate such integrals? Well, the technique is relatively straightforward. So the idea is pretty simple. What we want to do is first use trig identities to simplify the integral, and then use substitution to evaluate the resulting integral. Sometimes we may need to use integration by parts as well, but most often than not, substitution will be enough. Now, of course, the challenge is to find which trig identity is the right one to simplify the integral. That's not obvious. Okay, so what kind of trig identities are, uh, will we be interested in? So we'll first use uh, standard trig identities, Pythagorean identities, sine squared plus cos squared equals to 1, and similarly for tan and secant. So these ones you should know very well. We're also going to use a double angle formula. So these are relating sine of x and cos of x to sine of 2x, cos of 2x. An addition of angle formula which relates sine x cos y cos x cos y and sine x sine y. Now you don't have to know all of them by heart, but you can just look them up and use them to evaluate the integrals. Okay, so what I'll do now is just work out two examples and then I'll try to come up with a more general picture of how uh, this uh, technique works. So let's study first the uh, following integral. So the integral of the cube of the cosine function. So at first you might be tempted to just do a simple substitution, u equals cos of x. Now if you do that, then du will be minus sine of x dx. And the problem here is that there's no sign anywhere. So uh, you, it, this won't be very useful, or at least it won't be straightforward to implement this substitution. There's a better way of doing it. All right, so let's remove that and start again. How can we evaluate this integral? Well, one thing you could do first is just rewrite the cosine cube as a cosine square times cosine of x dx. All right, that's pretty trivial. But why would I do that? Well, the reason is the following. So cos of x dx, we know, is going to be the du. If I were to do the substitution u equals sine of x, then du would be equal to cos of x dx, right? So this factor uh, would be exactly du if I do the substitution u equals sine of x. But can I transform the integral such that this substitution is the right one? So can I transform the integrand, rewrite the integrand only in terms of sine function? Well, indeed, here I can, because I know of a great identity that relates cosine squared to sine squared. I know that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared of x. Now I still have my cos of x dx. So this is just using the Pythagorean identity. And once I've, done, once I've done that, then this is nice because then I can use substitution directly. So I'm going to use the substitution u equals sine of x and du equals cos of x dx because I factor out a cos of x dx here. So under that substitution, the integral becomes simply the integral of 1 minus u squared times du, which I can integrate. I get u minus u cubed over 3 plus a constant. And then I just substitute back to get sine of x minus sine cube of x over 3 plus a constant. Okay, so that worked. The key here was to first factor out a cos x dx because I knew that if I were going to do somehow the substitution u equals sine of x, that would be the resulting du. And then I used trig identity to uh, manipulate the integrand and rewrite it in terms of sine functions only. Okay, so that's one example. Let's do a second one. Very similar integral. Integral of cos square of x dx. Now can I do the same thing? Well I could try. I could try to factor out again a cos of x dx and try to use a substitution u equals sine of x, but I would have to rewrite that in terms of sine of x. And uh, there's no such formula. The, the Pythagorean identity is for cos square and not cos of x. So I can't really do that. Or at least that's not the easiest way to go about this. What can I do? Well, if you look back at the table of identities, or trig identities, 
there's one here that may be useful. There's a double angle formula that says that cos square of x is equal to 1 half 1 plus cos of 2x. All right, so maybe I can try to just use the straight ident trig identity to rewrite the integral and then try to integrate, see what I get. So if I just use this, I'll get that I have to evaluate the integral of 1 half times 1 plus cos of 2x dx, which I can split into two integrals, first 1 half dx plus 1 half of integral of cos of 2x dx. Now that's great. First integral I can do directly. The second one I just do a simple substitution, u equals 2x, du equals 2 dx. What do I get? Well, the first thing will give me 1 half times x plus 1 half under the substitution. I get cos of u and then du over 2. Excuse me back, x over 2 plus 1 quarter times the integral of cos of u, which is just sine of u, but u is equal to 2x, so I get sine of 2x plus a constant. So that is the final answer. Great, so here I had to do something slightly different. So I used the trig identity again, but now I used the double angle identity, and then I could integrate directly. So I didn't have to factor out uh, something like cos of x dx. Uh, here it was just simply than that. So you see that depending on the type of integral here, uh, it's actually quite different. It's not always the same technique. I mean, it's always the same idea. Use a trig identity and substitution, but which trig identity you should use is not obvious. You have to think carefully about it. Okay, so let me recall uh, the general idea. So we're going to study, uh, with this technique, we can uh, study a whole bunch of uh, integrals that fall into these types, so product of sines, cosines, tans, and secants. And we also know a whole bunch of trig identities, Pythagorean identities, double angle formula, addition of angle formula. And the idea, the trick for this method is to start with the integral, integral use a trig identity to reformulate it, and then use a substitution. But the big question, of course, is the following. Can we come up with a general rule that will tell us which identity and substitution will work for any given trig integral that fall into one of these categories? That is not obvious. So that is a challenge for this week. Can you come up with this general rule? Now, my advice is to try a bunch of integrals. For example, try the integral of sine cube of x or secant of x to the fourth power. Just try them. Try to find a good trig identity and then substitution that will work. And after doing many such integrals, try to come up with a general rule that will uh, work for any such integrals. Now, we'll uh, study many more examples in class and try to come up with this general rule altogether.